All right, Isaiah 50, let's call this one my back in this chapter that my Bible, the ESV, entitles Israel's Sin and the Servant's Obedience, contrasting the two essentially in verse one where it begins talking about literally Israel's iniquities going on in verses two and three to talk about a famous theme, God's response and the way of rebuke. Understanding the transition picks up in verse four, where it begins to use the Christ or the servant as an example of the way in which they should have gone. Understanding that it's going to break it down pretty much verse by sorry verse by verse, giving us a different element of the way in which his obedience wasn't simply kissing up to God, but it was demonstrating ways in which we can practically improve our own lives just in basic day to day wisdom. But more importantly, showing the way in which he wraps it all up by trusting God that even in times when it doesn't seem like it's paying off, that he will be true to his word, that the obedience and all of the suffering actually has a point. And so the first thing that he is going to demonstrate in verse four is wisdom, meaning it's going to say that he may know how to sustain with a word the one who is weary. Once again, it is not simply personal self-interested wisdom, how I can collect more bank or make more money. It is how I can be of value to the people around me. That is the first thing it leads off with uh, talking about the way in which his obedience paid off. It was him being a blessing in practical ways. Understanding that the second half of verse four is going to talk about the way in which he didn't simply um, grow up or he wasn't simply born with the wisdom. He had to listen to get it. And so um, there is a level of humility that preceded his ability to have value. Verse five talks about the way in which literally he was not rebellious. So that is uh, in a lot of ways, the flip side or the derivative of his obedience It's what pays off. Meaning in order for him to actually be able to have the wisdom and the hearing, he has to be willing to follow and acknowledge there's some things that he flat out doesn't know. Verse six is going to talk about uh, our title verse, uh, the way in which his obedience actually manifested itself beyond simply being smart um, and being willing to suffer. And so it's literally going to say in a famous passage, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. Understanding that he was going to seem to take a loss at that point that was not going to be vindicated in life. He was going to wait for God to vindicate him, as verse 7 is going to say. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. Something reminiscent of the way in which God gave Ezekiel, the prophet whose book is going to follow Isaiah. Sorry, maybe two books later. Um, he's going to follow Isaiah with a special gift, it seems, for determination, meaning he is going to uh, preach in a time when people aren't going to want to hear it. And as determined as they are to resist what he's saying, God is going to make Ezekiel even more determined to get his job done. Likewise, the Christ is going to talk about the level of determination, sorry, the level of determination he seems to have gotten from God, quite possibly because of his obedience and his humility. Going on in verse eight to talk about the way in which all these things are going to be dependent upon the fact that he trusts God. And likewise, that God is trustworthy. Understanding that a lot of our disappointment in life comes from being too eager to place trust in things and people that don't deserve it. Quite possibly begging the question, as we mentioned on Sunday, what facts or on what facts is his faith based? And it's quite possible understanding the Gospels, which described the life of Christ, that the fact that God gave him a level of gifting or blessing that was not dependent upon the popularity or the approval of the people around him, uh, that level of vindication in life might have caused him to trust that God would likewise vindicate him in death. Reminding me of uh, some videos I saw either this week or the past week of uh, some people who had fallen on hard times. However, the fact that they were now living on the streets in no way killed or crushed the talent that God gave them, quite possibly represented by the fact that even as street people, they still went viral for having a level of talent that even the streets could not crush. Meaning, if you've ever developed a talent in something, you understand uh, quite possibly how often you have to practice to perfect it and uh, likewise to maintain it. 
The fact that we from time to time see quote unquote street people go viral for talents that have survived the streets may give us an indication of why Jesus himself said, blessed are the poor in Luke and blessed are the poor in spirit in Matthew's version of the Sermon on the Mount. And even though these videos may not be evidence of divine intervention, they may give us an indication of why Jesus, no matter how he was treated, still trusted that the same God who made him talented in spite of the animosity that surrounded him in vindicating him with talents that did not depend upon public approval, once again, would vindicate him in death. Likewise, however, it may be possible that the Christ, vindicated by gifts that were not dependent upon the approval of the people around him, used that as indication that God was in fact trustworthy, which is why we sometimes say, my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that in our search for God, God willing, we will trust his promise that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him.